Today I'll share our complete spring planting schedule and our garden layout plan to give you a better idea of how we plan to transform this into something more like this. I've been doing this long enough that I usually do all my garden planning in my head, but this year I thought I'd put together some documents to give you a better idea of how we approach our spring planting. Let's start with a quick overview of our spring planting schedule and garden layout, which you can find through links in the description below. This is our outdoor planting schedule. The seed icon represents when seeds are sown, and the seedling represents when plants are transplanted into the garden. If there's no seedling, it means seeds are sown directly in the soil. Red represents two layers of protection, such as a cold frame inside a hoop house. Yellow is one layer, like a cold frame. And green means there's no protection. The red vertical line is our last frost date. As a rule, I determine outside planting dates by starting with the recommended dates found on seed packets and in books like Square Foot Gardening. I then move the date as much as three to four weeks earlier for each layer of protection. This approach is designed to increase yields in our small garden by extending the growing season for cold hardy crops. However, as an experiment, this year we'll also start some of our tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants using this approach to see how it goes. I should note that the schedule can change depending on the weather. So far we've had a relatively mild winter, and the schedule reflects my expectation that the mild weather will continue. But if the weather turns for the worse and we have heavy snows or extreme cold, the schedule could be delayed. We're also starting some plants in our grow room. The indoor planting schedule is very similar to the outdoor schedule, except that red represents when plants are indoors, and green when they're outdoors. As you can see, we're starting heat-loving basil, eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes indoors. We're also starting our celery, broccoli, and cauliflower indoors because we haven't had the best luck growing them in our shaded garden, and we want to give them every advantage. Now let's take a look at the garden layout, which includes the entire backyard garden except for the hoop house. I've excluded this area of the garden because it's already entirely planted, mostly with edible perennials and self-sowing annuals. The layout shows where and when I'll plant each crop. We don't have to plant all of the dark green areas because most already contain established perennials, but the rest of the garden will be planted with annuals. The dates under each crop indicate when we'll plant or transplant the crop. You may notice that we scatter many of our crops all over the garden instead of planting them together in a single bed. For example, we have tomatoes here, 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 and here. We do this because interplanting crops with a variety of unrelated crops in various locations helps reduce pest and disease problems. Now let's review the complete planting schedule from start to finish. We started planting on February 13th here in the hoop house, when we planted lettuce and spinach in this cold frame, and kale, collards, and onions in containers. The recommendations vary. Many sources say these crops can be started outside about four weeks before the last frost. But each layer of protection allows me to push the planting date three to four weeks earlier. So with two layers of protection, I planted about seven weeks earlier on February 13th. As temperatures warm, I'll gradually remove layers as well as vent remaining layers when needed. The schedule can change depending on the weather, but I anticipate removing the cold frame cover from the lettuce and spinach and opening up the kale, collard, and onion containers on March 19th. On April 2nd, I'll remove the plastic from the top of the hoop house and transplant the kale, collards, and onions into unprotected areas of the garden. Our next round of planting was on February 20th in the grow room. That's about 10 weeks before our last frost, and the perfect time to start broccoli, cauliflower, and celery indoors. Weather permitting, we'll set out the broccoli and cauliflower on April 2nd, and the celery on May 7th. We also started peppers and tomatoes on February 20th. This is a little earlier than we usually start them, but we wanted to start some early just in case we have an unseasonably warm spring and can set them out early. We're also growing a couple of larger tomato varieties for the first time in many years, and we want to make sure we have as much growing time as possible. That brings us to this weekend when we'll sow seeds directly in this part of the garden. To get a better idea of the space we have available for planting, let's take another look at the garden layout. The green areas are already planted and the squares containing the letter G have garlic planted in them, but still have room for other crops. Each small square represents one square foot. Because the sun is still relatively low in the sky this time of year, the north side of the garden gets more sunlight than the south side. So we'll plant our next crops in these two beds on the north side. We'll plant carrots, beets, parsnips, spinach, and lettuce in this bed, 
and sugar snap peas and radishes in this bed. These crops can all be planted in the garden about four weeks before the last frost, but because we're growing under protection, we're going to plant another four weeks earlier. As before, we'll gradually remove the protection as the weather warms. That brings us to next weekend, which is about six weeks before our last frost. As an experiment, we'll start tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants in the hoop house inside bottles like this. At the same time, we'll start the same crops inside in the grow room. And over the course of the growing season, we'll compare the results. If the plants started outside do as well or better than those started inside, we'll shift our emphasis more to planting outside in the future. The eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes started outside will remain under two layers of protection until April 16th and will be transplanted into unprotected areas after the last frost, along with the same crops that were started in the grow room. A number of other crops will be started next week as well. Basil will be started in the grow room and remain there until transplanted into the garden after the last frost. Arugula, bok choy, beets, carrots, rutabaga, and turnips will be started outside under low tunnels, which will be removed on April 2nd. On March 26th, we'll be planting only one crop, potatoes, and to make the best use of our limited space, we'll plant them in this compost bin. Potatoes can be planted three weeks before the last frost, but because we'll plant them under one layer of protection, we'll plant them five weeks before the last frost, and we'll remove the plastic on April 9th. April 2nd will be a very busy day in the garden. We'll sow a number of new crops and transplant a number of others. Let's take a look at the garden layout to see what's in store. We'll plant Swiss chard, carrots, lettuce, and turnips directly in the soil with no protection. We'll also transplant kale, collards, and onions that were started outside and broccoli and cauliflower that were started in the grow room. On April 9th, we'll plant some more potatoes in this section of this raised bed. By then, this low tunnel will no longer be here, and we'll plant the potatoes without any covering. On April 16th, we'll plant strawberry spinach without protection, and cucumbers, zucchini, patty pan, kushaw, acorn and butternut squash under protection. The cucumbers and squash will remain protected for three weeks. The butternut squash will climb the same trellises as the peas and will install new trellises for the cucumbers and acorn and kusha squash. The next big planting day will be May 7th when we finish our spring backyard planting. We'll plant sweet potatoes, scarlet runner beans and pole beans and we'll transplant tomatoes. The beans and tomatoes will grow vertically on trellises We'll also plant two new edible perennials, rhubarb and a peach tree. Finally, on May 14th, we'll move our basil, celery, eggplants, and peppers from our grow room to containers in the front yard, completing our spring planting for 2016. As we advance through our spring planting schedule, I hope to bring you along to share our results. This is definitely the busiest time of year in the garden, but it will all be worth it months from now when the garden looks like this. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <music>